okay <clears throat> so i know it looks super sketchy and not very promising right now but trust me when i say this is going to wind up being something pretty cool i just didn't put a whole lot of forethought into it before i started and already had been mixing concrete a couple days ago and had to just jerry rig it together with some of this you know wood that i had that got rained on today but you know it wasn't wet then as a I didn't frame anything up for it, but what we're doing here basically is I'm going to make a rudimentary heat treating oven, but it's basically going to be more along the lines of a gas forge. I don't really plan on doing any foraging with it. I'm just going to use propane as the fuel to do a uh, heat treating, but I'll outsource any heat treating that has to, you know, that's done with a metal that can actually be heat treated. This is specifically gonna be used for carburizing mild steel using, you know, crushed up charcoal or case night or something in a, you know, container that I'm also working on welding together that'll go in there. And uh, being that it's gonna be used for that kind of uh, heat treating, just like the carbur carburizing process before then going back in there and actually heat treating it the way you would if it were something like 4140 it really aside from it not going to be very pretty it doesn't have to be super accurate as long as it can reach the high enough temperatures and maintain that temperature range but i don't have to like have it dialed in as long as it's within that certain range which will be you know easy to do using propane gas or a gas, you know, style heat treating oven. So, um, but what we're doing here basically is, uh, I'm just using some $5 bags of, ignore the charcoal bag there, that's from grilling some T-bones the other day, but some $5 bags of Quickcrete. And what we're doing is just, you know, we're creating this outer wall, which is more or less I'm not going to say decorative, but, you know, it'll, it'll help maintain the important parts away from the element. So I'm eventually going to cover this with a tarp when I'm not using it. But uh, we're just doing like an outer wall that's probably got to come up. You know, we're a little bit less than halfway done with the wall. And I'm actually doing this in a, the not so ideal way of I'm not doing it all in one solid pour. Because like I said, I just kind of started this deal the other day on a whim and didn't really put much planning into it but I figured it'll be good enough since it's just an outer wall and I'm gonna have uh, shit what are they called the like the heat treating oven or kiln bricks go on the side of there I'm losing my train of thought right now but basically I'm gonna be I built a heat treating oven a couple years ago an electric one uh, that I'll show you all in a minute that I have inside and I'm gonna be just you know i had a couple hundred dollars invested in just the bricks the refractory bricks or refractory cement uh the bricks are called something else but you know they're the high temperature bricks that are made to you know go inside everything from fucking pizza ovens to uh you know heat treating ovens to kilns to forges whatever and so i'm gonna take that apart i'm gonna have to do some cutting with the saw because it's, you know it's got refractory cement hold together and i'm gonna reuse those the bricks in that to layer the bottom and the insides of this like the, the wood will all be gone by then <clears throat> and that's what's going to you know retain the the flame and the heat for the heat tree but uh and the reason i'm gonna be taking that apart is because i mean it was a cool little oven but like at the time when i built it i made the like the volume that the oven could hold too small for some of the projects I'm wanting to take on now. And also because a while back, eventually the coil got burned up in there since it was electric and I didn't put much forethought into that one by making it where, you know, it, like I said, you'll see it in a minute, but like it had a, the opening was only like a four by four, like square inch. You could barely fit an arm in there, but it was like 18 inches deep. So, and, and with it, you know, that folded down from the front, 
once I already had the coil in there and it burned up, it was going to be real hard to change the coil without having to like cut the top of the oven off. So I just figured I was going to repurpose it for this. I've actually, I've put more thought into how I want this to function than I have actually like constructing it. <laughs> I think it's going to turn out cool though. But so right now what we're doing slowly is just this outer wall of it. But, uh, the reason I'm thinking that it'll be okay that I'm doing this, uh, quick crete in layers instead of just one solid pour because obviously I'm not going to rent a concrete mixer. I don't even have a wheelbarrow. I'm doing a five gallon bucket. But, uh, because I remembered being that I, you know, I have a worthless ass history degree and I, you know, specialized in World War II era European theater studies that a lot of the Nazi you know, stuff like the Atlantic Wall or some of their uh, anti-air gun towers, any of their big concrete structures, a lot of them were made in layers. They weren't, they were never done in solid pores. They would do like a layer of something, but, but you know, they're obviously trying to withstand, you know, bombs and big, you know, warship guns hitting them. So like they'd do like a layer that was like, you know, five feet tall, five feet wide or thickness and do that around like the base and then let it dry and then do another layer like that on top and just have rebar going all the way through it which so kind of same principle as that was why i was like i think this might work if i do it along that principle i'm not putting rebar in there because i'm not trying to withstand a fucking you know 22 inch shell coming in and hitting it <laughs> but uh yeah so that's this little product i got going on right here right now along with uh the container that's going to be used for the carburizing and too many other things going on at once. Okay, sorry, my phone died. Um, but here's the old heat treating oven that I was previously mentioning saying that I'm going to wind up uh, cutting up to reuse the bricks of it because the coils burned up in it. But uh, I mean, it was a good little unit for what it was worth, but or, or for a little while, but like I said, uh, the chamber of it is really only like four by four by, you know, maybe 12 inches back into it. So it's not big enough for a lot of the stuff I'm wanting to do. Um, this is gonna be the actual container that's gonna be used to do some of the carburizing. I still have got, got to do some other stuff there. But uh, the plan for this, aside from, you know, scrapping or, you know, losing the metal and the electrical components and shit to it is that I'm going to have to take uh, some kind of a saw, thinking maybe a reciprocating saw, and uh, I'm going to cut the top off, cut the sides off. I'll have these two whole bricks here, the back section, and then the bottom part. And I'm going to try and fit as most of it into the you know, chamber of the new oven outside without having to, you know, in, in those sections, you know, I may have to cut a little bit more up. I've already got more refractory cement to then, you know, tie it all together. And I may have to order a few more bricks depending on, I haven't really taken the measurements for like space and how this is all going to turn out. I'm not going to until I cut this thing up, but, and then for the lid, because this oven's going to instead be like how, where this one has the door that folds out, the one out there is going to be uh, access to it's going to come from the top more like a like a little forge type deal and for that I'm thinking about uh, I'm just going to get some like KO wool you know that that uh whatever kind of fabric it is that they use to, for uh, forges and things I can't remember the KO wool is like a name brand I can't remember the term for the fabric but I already ordered a like a two inch thick piece of that that I'm going to use for the top I'm just going to cut a hole in the center of it like they do in forges and then maybe you know, do something similar, like with this, have this angle irons holding this brick there, have that over it, and, you know, maybe something like a thin piece of sheet metal on top of that. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, just throw a tarp over it when I'm not using it to keep the inside of it dry. But so that's the game plan. I had originally intended to uh, film a little bit of me out here doing some of this, the next layer of the concrete, but like I said, my phone died and we're not standing here long because since it rained, there's mosquitoes eating the shit out of me while I was out here doing this. But as you can see, I got 
Yeah, yeah something on my mouth. Quite freaking mosquito. Next layer of concrete put in there. Um, I added a little bit too much water to it, especially with the moisture in the air, but it'll solidify within the next day or so. It'll just take a little bit longer. But yeah, I got that going around, as you can see. And like I said, because I'm doing this so much on the fly, I've got these two little, as you can see right here, this gap right there. And then the one up in the front here, this brick's not actually cemented. It's just holding up that two by four back there. And that was because I was trying to decide on uh, thinking I would originally put low, like the burn, like if I were to go with the, the forge style burners they sell on Amazon or whatever, I was gonna need entrance points to it. You know, two of them, cause I was thinking of using like a double burner system. But uh, actually I came up with something, which I still may use both of them. If not, I'll just go back and patch one of them up. But after doing some research, I was able to come in and find this. Just give me a second to pull it up. Because I'm wanting it to make sure it gets hot enough to actually perform the carburizing process. And I can't remember off the top of my head what that number is, but I know it's pretty hot. It's at least 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe over 18 plus. And so like, I'm, you know, the little forages they sell on like Amazon, generally you can't do any like steel work with them. It's just for like aluminum and copper and stuff like that as they come. But then I got in here and found, I know, I, you know, well, backtrack a second. You know, if you add oxygen to it, whether it be from a bottle or just like air fuel somehow, it's gonna get hotter. I've tested this after I've seen a video of a dude doing a, you know, a coal, an air forced coal heat treat, just out of a makeshift oven out of pretty much like some like normal house bricks and some like charcoal and then he had a heat gun blowing into it and he was able to do some like a heat treat of a small part with that using some casonite that he just dunked it in afterward but so i found this electric blower here i've already ordered it this green thing and it also has in some of the pictures you can see let me see if i can zoom in a little bit you can see it has a uh, shows some various setups of people that are using them both and granted you know it's for originally for a coal forge like for blacksmithing but you can see in pictures here that people use them for the gas uh the gas forges or gas heat treating oven situations but this isn't the one i mean like hell no me and mine will probably wind up looking like wind up looking more like this you know haggard one but uh the one that really struck me was this one right here which you can see so they got it on the bottom of this cart and then you know they use they're using uh like piping to connect the blower goes up there just goes into the top of that thing this is a pretty sweet little homemade forge oven deal and then they got their gas coming in right there so i'm going to try and do something like that as what i'm hoping to wind up doing it we'll see how you know it may wind up looking more like the other one. We'll find out just as I source parts on the fly and just kind of do this after my, you know, it's Memorial weekend now, but normally after my day job. But uh, the goal is to have something that functions like this if it doesn't even look like this. But, and I'm assuming from this one that even though he has the air and the gas coming in from the top, you can see how the flames kind of come from the bottom. So it got, it's got to enter the top and then the air and the gas has to distribute somewhere like around it and then come back up to the burner from the bottom you just can't see in the picture so i've yet to decide if i'm gonna have like this branch off into the one outside to go in and just you know have this go in in one area or if i'm gonna have it go in the back and the front where i left those spaces open in the outer casing to have two that you know do it or if Okay, so I guess that'll do it for this video. Um, by the way, I'm going to do this heat treating construction oven deal in a multi video part series because I'm doing the layers of concrete in, you know, multiple layers and it takes time to dry and I'm waiting on stuff like the blower to come in. I've still got to source all the tubing and kind of figure out how it goes. So I'm just going to 
you know, post this tonight just because I haven't put anything up in a long, you know, probably at least a month. Uh, and I'll, you know, move forward with doing this like as it, the project comes along. Eventually, you know, you'll get, see, get to see the finished, the finished product, the finished, the end product when it's finished. <laughs> Sorry there. Um, but yeah, and apologies for not, you know, having been putting as much stuff out there uh, lately or like I would have wanted to, you know, since I'm still trying to release some products of my own. Uh, just had a lot of stuff going on. I've been really busy at work. My, you know, I work for a small, uh, small company during the day. It's just me and one other guy that do all the work there. And uh, he's got, he got injured riding a motorcycle and has been kind of, you know, about to go into surgery here pretty soon. So he's been kind of, you know, prepping for that and gonna be out for a while. And I've had some personal stuff going on with, uh, I guess I'm about to hear pretty soon be in a custody battle, it looks like, which fucking blows just to even think about. But uh, I haven't given up on, you know, trying to share information and still build shit and, you know, try and make stuff and if it's cool enough, you know, maybe might want to buy it one day type of deal. You know, I, I'm still passionate about this stuff. There's just been a lot of shit going on. I've got, like I said, I've got a whole bunch of other products. I bought, you know, we bought the surface grinder that's up at the day shop, uh, you know, like a month and a half ago and still haven't even got around to getting it fully set up. Like, I mean, we've used it for, you know, just a couple little things here and there, just kind of like playing around with it. But it, I mean, I still got to throw leveling feet on it, get it cleaned up. Like it's just, we all we've done basically is just set it somewhere, get the electrical ran to it and play around with it. But, cause we just had too much other shit going on. But I've also got some other projects coming up that are going to be, uh, I've just here, I mean, I guess I can, if I can give me a second to pull fusion up, I can show you a couple, couple of them real quick, or at least one of them. But, uh, I'm going to be design. I've already designed, well, I'll show you infusion here in a second, but I'm going to be making my own wheel balancer for the surface grinder. And then because we're going to make a, you know, a little fixture for holding the diamond dressing tools as well, which that thing's so simple. I didn't even do one up in CAD. That's just going to be that, you know, that'll be like, in all honesty, if me and my boss, who's the expert welder, would just take time, like an hour after work to do it, like, hopefully we'll do it like next week before he goes into surgery, but. So there'll be some other projects coming along that I'll try to get some video of, and you know, maybe if, if he's cool with it, you know, maybe get some filming of some shit that we do up there, you know, maybe not necessarily related to what we do during the day, but some of our, you know, side projects and after work things and stuff we do up there because like you know we got a lot of machines up there and he's got a lot of connections to various industries for other you know just like side gigs and people we know and homie projects and stuff like that and a lot of it's really cool shit but like you know like just i haven't even like pitched the idea to him about you know being like hey can i film some shit up here and put it on my channel that no one really fucking watches <laughs> But uh, here's the wheel balancer for fu let fusion load, and you can check it out. I guess we'll end on this note, actually. But I've already got all the materials for it, and I've got, I you know, bought some hardened, pre-hardened rails from McMaster and stuff. I just did all the CAD, but I still got a... Only thing I've done so far is actually getting it done or working on it is just, you know, bandsaw cutting the material once it showed up and you know ever having buying all the you know little hardware components for it from places that have showed up but i haven't actually started doing anything on the cnc machine or the grinder and stuff for it but you know it's basically i mean if you ever seen the you know like tormach style wheel balancers they're kind of generic like you know they're they're here, I'll pull one of those up too. Sorry, I'm just dragging this on more and more because that's what I do. Can I not type Tormach? Okay, let's 
let's see. Machines. Okay, we'll go. Wheel. Wheel balancing stand. Okay, so this is where I got the idea from for mine. It was off of this right here. Obviously, they use a casting for the body of it. And then they have some, you know, precision ground rails up there and the way they hold it on is a little different than the way I'm going to go about it. But I saw this and it was just like, damn, like that, you know, I guess that's not a whole lot of money, but it's not a whole little money either. And so I figured that for, you know, after buying the materials, not including the time I'm going to put into it, I'll probably have saved like $130 in materials and everything versus just buying this but i figured it would be cool to have my own that like i made with you know as you can see in the fusion that it's going to have like the wolf house logo on it and on the side there and you know i figured maybe when i actually get around to starting working on it it'd give me something you know a cool little project to film some stuff of and maybe put up here as content for people to see and you know hopefully learn something from or just think is cool or some shit like that but yeah so this is something that's on the the upcoming to-do list or chopping block of things along with some other shit so uh it, it may it you know i'll be honest it's probably not going to be as consistent as i was you know before coming to take on this day job with my buddy and before all the drama going on with you know my personal life and stuff going on at work with like him getting hurt and things and so i'm still gonna put some stuff out there but it it, it ain't gonna be as frequent you know that i'm all shooting for you know it, it may be sporadic you know uh, if I, i'm gonna try and see if i can do at least like one video a month will be you know I'd be happy with that, but if I, you know, got time, like with it being Memorial Weekend, I'm just going to be sitting here for four days, not getting to hang out with my kids at all. Like, you know, maybe I'll put out another one or two of some other shit if I get to doing around here over the weekend. But so there, it may kind of come in bursts. It may have some like, you know, drought periods. I don't know. Just, just know I'm, I'm not giving all this shit up. It's just kind of, it's not taking a back seat. There's just other stuff going on so it's you know it may seem it's going to be a little inconsistent possibly but yeah okay so i guess that'll kind of wrap this one up and uh if i come up with anything else cool to try and show anybody or just you know update the shit that i'm doing trying to you know start my own business and being someone who's passionate about building shit making shit engineering machines firearms and any, anything like that like that, that's just that's what this is all about man but all right cool take it easy y'all